Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash Capes and Lunatics. Hope to see you there. Diggity dink. Hello and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. Happy birthday. I feel joining me as always. It is. Hi, I'm Kristen. But yes, we have two episodes or two issues tonight. The new issues, Nightwing 112 and Titans number nine, both out. Well, today, well, yesterday as we record this, and get that little birthday thing I mentioned. You sent me that article. When is it that they're going back to Wednesday? Do you remember? I don't know. I don't know if they mentioned when, but yeah, eventually they are. Oh, okay. Because every other comic publisher releases on a Wednesday. Yeah. Marvel, Image, all even the smaller ones, they all do it on a Wednesday, except for DC. I mean, when you get them digitally, it's kind of cool, but I can see how that's not convenient if you're getting it in real life, because who's going to go to the store twice? Yeah, exactly. Unless they thought people were just going to go for DC, but it's kind of limiting. All right. But yes, I didn't even realize until you were, you uh, brought it up. Uh, yes, today, March 20th, we were recording this, uh, is considered Nightwing's birthday because... That was the date that, uh, what the Tales of the Teen Titans annual came out. Yeah, that's what, that's what I saw on the online. Oh, nice. So you know it's true. <laughs> of course, everything on the internet is true. Uh, I mean, actually, I could see what was, it? yeah. Oh, you know what? Which oh. annual was it? It wasn't it. Was it? There wasn't, Did you say it was annual four? No. Um, well, that was the end of the storyline, but wasn't it like issue 44, 43, 43 or 44, where he actually we actually see him in the suit for the first time? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Tales of, so Tales of the Teen Titans 44? Yes, I believe so. Oh, you know what other? Oh, I thought it was... Um, I also thought even before that that this was kind of um, considered Dick Grayson's birthday because isn't it the first day of spring, Robin? Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what they mean because now I'm seeing Tales of the Teen Titans 44. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it says it was released in July. Because that's what I think I've heard before that it's like his birthday is considered yeah today because yeah is so maybe they mean it's. Dick's birthday, not that this yeah. was okay. That makes sense because that, I yes, I'd heard that his birthday was the first um, day of spring. Yeah, yeah, I did, but then I thought I saw something that they were like in 1984, but I guess they just meant like in 1984, his birthday, what he was meant then or something. Yeah, so is that the cover um, date that was June? Because I was gonna, I was trying to see if that math worked, unless it did come out in March. I don't yeah, know. but I think shouldn't it be May? If it came out in March, uh, um, sometimes I, I swear I don't know how they publish these. Sometimes that uh, maybe yeah yeah yeah. I forget if it was back then if it there was bigger lead time or not. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I I know I've heard the spring thing, so maybe that's it. Well, whatever. Happy yeah. birthday, Dick Grayson. That's right. <laughs> For whatever reason we're celebrating, we're just going to go with it. <laughs> yes, yes. And again, the old, um, well, you know, the Nightwing book is, this this week was 112. But next week they're going to celebrate issue 300 for the legacy numbering. Yeah. Well, wait, I think what well, that thing I sent you from 13... Hmm. Well, they are saying.
saying that he appeared on March 20th, 1984. So maybe that is when yeah. it's supposed to have come out. I don't know. I was going to say, maybe Marvin George did that on purpose. I was just doing the math. I'm like, how did they get 300? Okay, but I, I get it. I think I get it. They get okay, so it says New Teen Titans 39, where he says he's not going to be Robin anymore, was cover dated February 84, mm. but it came out in November 1983. So I guess they were more than, I guess they were three months behind then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Hmm. But anyway, I sent you that because, as we know, as I've said before, um, what else do you know? I forgot the guy's name. But on the 13th Dimension, the great guy, Chris Franklin, uh, wrote an anniversary salute to Dick Robin to Nightwing 40 years later. And he wrote what... I would say Phil and I both contend is definitely true. Uh, he was talking about how the transition from Robin to Nightwing, uh, that says the end of the Wayne Grayson partnership has been represented many times since, but never with such understated maturity and warmth. That hmm. the very beginning hmm. where he gives Jason the new outfit in Batman 368. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he even talked about that outsiders uh Titans crossover we did last time. Oh. And apparently there was a comics collector magazine issue number three in spring nineteen eighty-four that teased that after more than four decades, Robin becomes Nightwing. So you know, so you got like a preview in this magazine. Ooh, I want that now. I see that. I saw that image. And this guy also, this is a man after my own heart, also agrees that Disco Wing is pretty, is pretty on fire. Oh, it's yeah. He says, it's been derogatorily caused the disco costume. I don't get it. It was an excellent transition from Robin. I mean, Nick, it's true. It's better than some of those other ones. All right, so we have some issues to talk to. Well, I have, some, I have some issues. Yes. <laughs> How about we start with Titans? Because I want to save Nightwing. Oh my god, I love this. I love the Nightwing issue. Well, the, the first story, anyway. Oh yeah, this guy also he says he's having McFarlane has released two Nightwing figures in their Superpowers revival line, and he sure hopes they get around to the original costume. That's right. Disco wing. Disco wing. Oh, yeah. We need a collar. One with a collar. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, heck, I'm waiting for Titan then. For that McFarland toys to put out Titan's Tower. Because, I mean, they've done like Brainiac Scholarship. They've done Blue Beetle's Bug. Uh, yeah, they put out. And they've play. done oh. the. Invisible Jet and the Batmobile. Well, I know they did like a Batmobile and stuff, and they did something for Superman. So that original Superpowers line did have like Batman, Superman, like uh, vehicles. Oh, I don't know if they did the Invisible Jet this time because I don't think they did the first time. But yeah, but they're putting out more and more stuff. That it, no, they did the Invisible Jet. I saw it at Walmart. Okay, all right. So there's no reason not to do Titans Tower then. I don't know. I think they do the T Jet first. I mean, because Titans Tower is like a building. I mean, don't you think they'd have to do, like, the Hall of Justice first? <laughs> can do both. Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. All right. Uh, should we talk about these issues? Yeah, let me get it up. Okay. All right. Like I said, let's talk Titans first. 
fucking kids this this cover just does not happen in the story Sneaky how they do that. Mm -hmm. They've done that to us before that. Um, Teen Titan, the world's finest Teen Titans, where he was like, you're grounded. And then he wasn't grounded. Exactly. All right. Uh, so, yeah, number nine. We're at nine already. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since you read other, yes. more, more other things than I do. So this quintessence. I assume that's something that's been around. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah. So, like they're, so like, yeah, like what, what are these, why are these people the quintessence? They're, they just like know what's up. They're like basically cosmically attuned, you know, like Ganthet's one of the guardians of the universe. There's the wizard who gave Shazam his powers. Hera is a wonder woman. Yeah, goddess. God. Like, yeah. High fathers from the new gods. Of course, the Phantom Stranger and the Spectre. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, it, Ganthet, is he one of the Green Lantern people you said? Yeah, Guardians of the Universe, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Got it. But okay, they're about... so they know what's happening. Yes. And, that's weird. and they're worried about the Dark-Winged Queen. Mm. So, but then we see uh, the Titans are still cleaning up uh, Key West after that uh, with the hurricane. Or whatever. Oh, uh, just take a moment to appreciate Wally carrying all those dogs. I know. <laughs> and how happy the dogs are too. <laughs> I know, especially that one on <laughs> that one. The one on his back. <laughs> well, him too, yeah. 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 The whole, yeah. They're 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 all looking like woohoo. Ah, dogs. Mm, and again, it's pretty, especially with flooding. It's it's uh, very handy to have Tempest who could basically just move the water. Yeah. That is pretty awesome. Um, and then of course we see, awesome. then of course we see Raven looking uh those glowing red eyes. Hmm, wonder what's going on. Um, but then she almost starts a fight with uh Cyborg and Flash because it's like, oh Cyborg told uh or no oh, Flash told yeah. Flash told part of the Yeah. He's like, I meant to meant to, meant that specific volatile situation. I didn't mean leave the whole mission. And Dick's like, we'll, we'll we'll get you know, we'll clear things up once we get back. Now we got a job to do. Hmm. Then we had an ad for next next month's uh, Nightwing Legacy number three hundred. <laughs> oh, see the digital. You only have the very first ad. Yeah. The one for like Batman in the Dark Age, and then there are other ads. Okay, now like, we got a two not... two page ad for Nightwing three hundred. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so next month it's one thirteen, but that's if they it, kept if they stopped renumbering all the time, it would be three hundred. Yeah, and I I was I was doing the math just now. It's yeah yeah it's like all the ongoing series. So those the three ongoing series. And, it, and I, was th I think the math works if you add in that four issue limited series that start, you know. Okay. And, and then I would think I was only getting the 199 or 299. So I'm thinking they might add that Alfred's return. Might They might be counting that as the very first one. Okay. So are they counting Grayson or no, since that's technically not called Nightwing? It doesn't seem like it. Yeah, no. So. Okay. That's very confusing. I don't know. Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I always thought that that four issue, well, because that's where he first gets his new outfit is the yeah. miniseries. And I always thought it was a miniseries, but then a lot of times I see people call it Nightwing Volume 1, and then the on the ongoing, they're like Nightwing Volume 2. Like, yeah, that's kind of confusing, yeah. A miniseries? But whatever. I know. <laughs> mm, all right. I digress. Oh my lord! Okay, so there's a, there's a variant cover for you. There, he's in the disco wing costume, a variation of the disco wing costume, and there's a disco ball behind. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's awesome! Uh, all right. So meanwhile, in health. Uh, 
Darkness. We see Trigon. We'll have to wear our Disco Finest next month, Phil. Yes. If we ever have any. <laughs> All right. So, yes. Meanwhile, try in hell, Trigon is talking to Trilogy. Yeah, one of his kids. Most of Trigon's kids suck, except for Raven. Uh-huh. <laughs> kids are, like, all pathetic. <laughs> well, 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 when your dad's, uh, you know, the devil. Uh-huh. Well, just ask, well, you know, well, just ask Eric Trump, kids. <laughs> all right, anyway. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Trilogy's whining, like, eh, it's Raven. <laughs> <laughs> but in Trilogy's defense, right? Uh, I mean, a Trigon is a terrible parent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who's like, shut up! I'm gonna kick you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> she's and he's like, you are a new kid, and I don't even like you very much. You're far from my favorite. <laughs> Saving people. That's so Raven. That's so rude. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, no. Trigon says, you know, she, well, you know, once she fulfills her destiny she you know she's wants to use their her titans teammates you know bring them under her control as and as her army and trilogy's like oh come on she's an empath she can just control them i'm kind of hoping that there's some like double double cross in here that dark raven that i don't know good raven will leak leak enough into bad raven that she'll end up double crossing trigon or something that or maybe trilogy would just double cross help the Titans be just double cross his father. Yeah. Mm. And then one of Trigon's little minion shows up. Mm. I have need of a human agent. Uh I need to approach them without causing the usual running and screaming. I would like you to arrange a meeting on Earth. Uh, meanwhile, at the Bureau of Sovereignty headquarters, which used to be the Hall of Justice, peace. We see Peacemaker with a new recruit. How their their nickname is Boss. B O S. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I realize it's missing one S, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then so hilarious is like, make no mistake, we're on the side of good. And then they open the door, and literally, there's a demon in there. <laughs> and they had the wall is talking to Trigon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, we're on the side of good. <laughs> <laughs> Are we though? Are we? Yeah. Peacemaker's like, uh, we're just gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ma'am, Elevator Waller, well, it's gonna take some explaining and a memory wipe for the new recruit. Mm, but uh, I truly uh, I try going. I have some concerns about my daughter Waller, <laughs> man. The Waller, I am often concerned about your daughter. Uh, but he says she's dead. He says she's destined for greatness. I would, uh, the Titans could steer her from her destiny or like them removed from her life. And man, the Waller, you would like me to handle this, yes. What will you grant in return? Uh, Raven's about to come into devastating power to do this, and I will convince her to spare your world. and then Amanda Waller keeps uh, coming up with the carrot and stick uh, metaphor here. Because uh, uh, Trigon says, your world will die end if you don't help me. She goes, yes, that's the stick. Now offer me the carrot. Uh, I can destroy you in a microsecond. I, I love it. She's like, perhaps I prepared for the possibility of your kind. He's like, you cannot prepare for me. Really? Would you like to reach across my desk and test that out? Burn. I face some of those powerful creatures in the universe. I'm still here. I love when he offers her the presidency. She goes, that's a decent care, but I'm after actual power, not just the appearance of it. Oh, yeah. I wonder what she wants. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll find out soon. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Then we see the Titans returning home and all the pro- Beast Boy protesters outside. Mm-hmm. I love but, <laughs> Flash. Are, there, are any of the protest signs have bad puns at least? One reads, you should all be starfired. <laughs> like, ah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> uh, so they get home and Gar is uh, kind of sulking. Uh, 
It says his hero days are over. And Starfire's like, that's not true. Could have used you today. Even Tempest is like, every one of us has been made a scapegoat before. Been made a target and seen as a hate villain or a monster. Uh, Don says, Donna says, it doesn't matter what they think of us. We keep doing what we do. We keep helping. Mm, but Gar's like, they, there was a storm destroying their town, and they were more afraid of me than them, than the storm. Mm, so he goes to his room, and Raven, well, Starfire says, Raven, talk to him. She's like, me? Oh, of course. So, of course, of course, evil Raven saying, uh, you know, what are you doing? Last week, he showed you how to power to break the world. Today, words can hurt you. Basically calling him pathetic. But then she says she can take all his doubts and everyone uh, away. Which I guess she does. And he passes out. And then we, I guess good Rachel is yelling at bad Rachel. But I do like this because uh, she's like, I keep pushing the, you know, because uh, she's like, oh, the Titans will stop you. And uh, she kept reading their thoughts. They had very good psychic defenses, but I've been subtle. I'm making sure no one suspects. The thought has entered Nightwing's mind on many occasions, and I have plucked that thought away each time. So at least, at least Dick's trying to see, you know, see through it. Mm, but then she's like, "What about Donna? You think you can match her will? I'm monitoring her. Oh. Inkling of a doubt crosses her mind. I will destroy her. Donna Troy, a threat uh, has found Donna Troy." But I guess this is the message, the messenger from the quintessence, because uh, Hermes shows up. Yep. I love he's like, I may be too fast for mortal eyes to comprehend. And Wally walks and goes, hey, it's Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, oh, my God. I don't know if they, they just did that as like for whatever or if like Tom Taylor. Oh, God. When was it? It was like early 90s. There was a War of the Gods crossover. It was a Wonder Woman crossover. And like in every book, it like spilled over in everyone's book. And I think, uh, I think Wally raised Hermes back in that, uh, back then. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, does Tom Taylor call him back to like this early '90s? Like it was one issue. I'm like, oh my lord. <laughs> That's a deep cut. But yeah, I just thought it was funny because he's like, I'm moving too fast. But yeah, of course, since the Flash moves so fast, he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> Well, that's like in the Justice League, like Superman and Flash can have conversations at super speed. That's pretty funny. Mm. Well, that's all I always said. It's, it's got to be hard writing for Flash because it's like, that's a guy, like, if he, if it was real, you'd never be able to, like, get, you know, sneak up on him or, well, I guess you could sneak up on him, but most of the time you'd be too fast for anyone to even touch. And he can think faster and but then Hermes and or, uh, yeah, Hermes and Donna race and he's telling her about this threat until Raven gets rid of him and she says that was not Hermes it was a demon in disguise a trickster no doubt sent by my father and Donna says what does Trigon want he, she goes I don't know but if Trigon has turned his attention to us and Donna finishes the thought then the Titans must prepare for hell <laughs> Oh, Raven's little smile. I like to think, though, that, I mean, I don't know, of course, but it feels a little bit like Ra Evil Raven might have overplayed her hand a little bit with that one. Maybe, yeah, 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 because I'm just wondering if she's going to set a trap and then they're going to know it's a trap because Dawn is going to be like, you, you don't think I can tell the real Hermes from an imposter? So, yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be something. So I wonder if she's going to try to lead them in the actual hell. Or if she's going to do some weird mental thing trying to corrupt them or something. I guess we're about to find out next month. I guess so. And like I said, I wonder when Tom Taylor leaves the Nightwing book, if uh, I'm assuming we might get a renumber. I wonder if they're going to reboot this book or if it keeps going or if, we're, if Tom's going to stay here, you know, there's going to be another writer. Well, it hasn't said that he's leaving Titans, have they? Uh -uh. And I saw on Facebook because I followed him on Facebook. Yes. And somebody said 
they're not ending the book, are they? Or something like that. And he put, I assume it will continue with another writer and a smiley face or something. Oh, so, okay. so that leads me to believe that it will continue with another writer. <laughs> it is a low number. So yeah, I guess they could continue. Yes. Well, or I mean, I mean, maybe if they rebooted it as a new number one with a new writer, he would say the same thing. I mean, I guess uh, it's sure, like sure. this isn't the end of the book. And he was like, it, Nightwing will continue under a new writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they do like to do that anymore when a new writer comes on and do a new number one. I mean, like, whatever. I, I mean, maybe they won't. Maybe they will. Who knows? I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't care if they renumber it or not because it's like. Apparently, numbers are meaningless since we're like, it's 113, but if we kept numbering, but we don't because we keep starting over all the time, it would be 300. So whatever. It's like the number doesn't really matter anymore. Um, just so long as they don't stop publishing a Nightwing book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, sorry, I was trying to flip through some of the uh, solicits here because I think they're up to June for the solicit. So. I mean, the thing of it is, I feel like counting wise, because it's 114 and he said it's five issues or it's 115, then it'll, it will end at 119. And that feels weird to me. I feel like they'll keep numbering. I felt if it was 120, I could see them having that being the last issue and then starting over. But 119 feels like a really weird place to just stop for no apparent reason. Well, I mean, yeah, I... I mean, sometimes they'll do that. I mean, the last the last volume of Amazing Spider Man before this current one, they ended it at like ninety three. Oh, okay. So yeah, and we're and we're just no, like it, there is no rhyme or reason. Wait, so Marvel's doing it too? Oh yeah, they oh yeah they both do it. Yeah, Marvel and DC both do it. That's so weird. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I know why because I've read that number ones sell better than any other comic. But yeah, but then it really it doesn't after it's so annoying. Yeah. Ooh, were we were we aware of this? Uh April 30th, a uh night the Nightwing an this year's Nightwing annuals out. Uh I I mean I knew one was happening, but I yeah, it was like April 30th. That's fun. So maybe in maybe next month, maybe we should make the last episode of the month the, the new one so we can wait for the annual oh wait the 30th uh no i don't know i'm not sure how much the isn't the annual supposed to be about b yeah it looks like it yeah yeah no yeah we yeah, can so we can even push that back till till may yeah uh, how about we read it and decide if it's amazing we'll have a special show yeah but again if it releases on the 30th yeah no i need two april episodes now so yeah, I'm thinking we just we save that for review with them. We're we're gonna give a lot of attention to, to issue 300. So. <laughs> yeah, I assume it's supposed to be extra big size. Well, no, it'll probably be one. I mean, Nightwing's already big size, so it'll probably be all one story. It might be. Story yeah, I, could, I, I could see it even being bigger. So maybe. I guess we'll see. And on the ad, it said something by Marv Wolfman, I think. So uh, maybe Marv's doing a backup or something. Maybe Marvel talk about Nightwing because it's 300 and in Nightwing's 40. It's a magical year. <laughs> that would be the best of both worlds. Yeah, maybe Marv does like a little uh, text thing and then the, does like a backup story. Maybe we get see some disco wing. Yes. A flashback story. <laughs> all right, let's get all right. Let's get to Nightwing 112 or or 299, I guess. 299. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so I can see two ninety nine. So how do you feel about this? We're like most. I mean, we're set. We're kind of seeing Dick through Batman's eyes in this story. Yeah, it was it was cool. Uh -huh. As you know, I love me some father son. <laughs> yes, and I kind of like in the beginning where you know Bruce is kind of remembering. He's like, you know how you know how great Dick is now, but like back in the day, he was just you know right after he lost his parents, he was an angry child because, you know, in certain iterations, it's always like, oh, Dick was the perfect child and Jason was the angry one, but 
Of course, then Dick would be a little angry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and I think that also helps that Bruce would recognize that and know that yeah. since he dealt with it, he can help Dick. So it all just helps make sense more. I mean, because, yeah, like we've said before, they didn't worry about it in the 40s. In oh. 1940, they were like, ah, we need him to have a sidekick. So, like, let's get a random kid. He'll take him in. Done. Like, we don't need reasons. We don't need to explain it beyond, hey, kid, <laughs> your life might be in danger. Come live with me. And the kid's like, okay. <laughs> but um, uh, this is the 21st century, and we don't roll like that anymore. <laughs> Oh, Will and Justin were asking me on Saturday night when we were recording. They they were saying, hey, "How long do you think before they like kind of change his origin a little bit? You know, where it's going to be like, oh, well, you know, a carnival or circus is kind of outdated." And no, never. I don't think. No. He isn't going to become like, oh, he was training for the Olympics, and <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Okay. Because it's too famous. I could see them maybe like phasing the animals out of the story, but I. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I would say if they're going to have it. If they're going to change it to update it. Yes, I would see they would be fate. They would be switching Haley's circus maybe to more of a I mean, I don't I mean, they didn't do it in New 52, so I don't think maybe they would adjust it to more of a Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. Um, kind of thing as opposed to your more traditional circus, but the circus still exists. No, even the traditional one with animals, um, like they're not as prevalent, but they do. And ones with clowns and acrobats, and you know, sometimes the animals are like dogs or whatever that people don't feel bad about seeing with um, that. So I don't think that they face it out because it's so famous. Yeah, true. Just like, just like I don't see them. Because again, didn't Kyle say they they toyed with it only for like a hot second when they did the new Fifty Two? Uh, it's like I don't see them changing him to go by Rick or Rich or Ricky or anything else, Grayson, because he has always been Dick Grayson, and yes. it's famous. It's famous as that. And even though it's ridiculous, I mean, let's be real. It was probably still a little bit ridiculous, even in 1940. It's not like people only started using dick as a slang for penis, like, you know, in the 80s or something. I mean, it's been around a long time. <laughs> if they didn't change it in 1966, they're not going to change it. <laughs> exactly. I think that's part of why um, sometimes... Even though Dick was adopted by Bruce, it didn't, it was in like a slightly different, you know, it wasn't in the Batman books and, and stuff. I think sometimes that's why writers forget about it or don't pay as much attention or whatever is because, yeah, he's so famous, particularly from the 60s show. I mean, every episode they were like, Bruce Wayne and his youthful ward, Dick Grayson. Like, yeah. most people, if they even know what the word ward means, it's like, oh, wasn't that what that kid in Batman was? <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah. Well, it's like, for real, that's pretty much how people know. It. They know it if they're a medievalist like me because they talk about wards all the time, or it's like, oh, yeah, Batman, and that kid rather was his ward. I mean, that's like so i yeah i don't know i don't think they would i don't think they would change it well although yeah that's the other thing is aside from it being too famous it actually helps explain somewhat why batman which again they did not care about in the 40s but it did it work even then but it kind of helps explain why batman would even let a kid go out yeah because yeah he still trains him but Dick has a really obvious athletic ability that makes it seem like he's less likely to be hurt and just slightly justifies the child endangerment a little bit more. Yes, justified <laughs> child endangerment, yes. <laughs> All right, maybe not justify. It makes it seem not as bad. <laughs> yes, yes. Which, uh, all right, so taking that point back to this, I do like this scene in the in the cave, you know, when he's training young Dick and, you know, he's like, 
he's like he's like yeah you, you know the anger this is this is the place is it's fine letting it out here but you cannot take that out on the street because that's real people out there not punching bags Yes, I also like this because this is the kind of Batman I like to see. Yeah, that yeah. Um, many times is uh, forgotten in he's, other. He's not uh, cold. Yeah, he's not cold and angry and scowling. Yet. Yes, this is the Batman we do not see in uh, uh, many the of the Batman era. movies. <laughs> or the modern era, yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, I actually think that. I mean, again, it depends on the writer and the yeah. missteps. I think that since since they brought Damien in, since New 52, since Bruce is kind of like, since Bruce like died and came back and they rebooted, I think they've tried to do a better job of the family aspect of the Bat family mm-hmm. than, than they did. Not that there aren't some great, I mean, Gotham Knights, the first part of that run was really excellent um for the for the family stuff so not that there isn't some family stuff in there i do feel as though they have done i mean because now we have that webtoon there's like wayne family adventures there's more stuff out there if you like the bat family as bat family than there used to be and that's nice yeah the only thing that slightly annoys me about it is i also feel like and maybe it's just because they're making just so much more superhero media than they used to, but it feels like they've done a bit more Bat family stuff and Batman being family, but sometimes it seems to involve Damien more and that a little bit, not that I don't, I mean, Damien's an interesting character. It's not really against Damien. It's just annoys me that they were like, oh, Batman's had all these kids, but we don't really start emphasizing he's a family guy until he gets a biological kid. I'm like, that's kind of crappy. <laughs> I know, but again, they, I mean, they could get away with before Damien. Oh, it's a team. It's a team. But yeah, no, it's they were always a family. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, I do like this too, where they, you know, it, Tom Taylor even calls out Bruce is like, he's like, I have crossed that line. He's like, but he's like, where it's not about stopping the wicked. It's about, you know, it's about your own anger. And he's like, we can't hurt people because our parents died. But yes, he says, uh, but it's he's like, uh, because of the pain and all that, because we know how much it hurts to lose what we lost. But if and if we can ha- stop what happened, what, what that happening to others, and then Dick's like, we have to. This is what our our family does. And again, it was basically just Tim, him, Tim, him, Dick, and Alfred at that point. So. This is what our family, our family does. Mm. But yeah, that's when Dick was like, Bruce, I don't want to hurt anyone out there. I'd I'd like to keep training. Bruce like, good. (laughs) And then we're at the present and uh, Haley's begging for, uh, what did they give her? Bacon? Bacon, yeah. Haley knows what's up. Oh, oh, we didn't give it. Oh, we didn't mention that in the in the Titans uh, uh, issue when they're interviewing the people and that kid's like, yeah, he's like, uh, he's like, Nightwing took me up on the jet, let me like swing around his stick thing. He's like, and he told me about his, show me pictures of his dog, his soup, his super dog named Bitewing. Yeah, <laughs> yep, that was cute. Mm. That was so cute. But yeah, so basically, uh, Batman. Uh, Messages Barbara and wants uh, exact uh, Dick's exact location details for the last month, and Dick's like, yeah, he knows about the old uh, the Fear Heights thing, and Barbara's like, are you comfortable with that? And he's like, am I comfortable with reverse stalking? And Barbara's like, it's a mystery, Dick. He wants to solve it because he's one of the world's greatest detectives, and he's your dad. Aww. And Dick's like, give him what he wants. Uh, but then Dick Haley suited. wants the bacon. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, but Dick starts suiting up. He, again, he's th- talking about the murder, which we saw last, you know, last issue. Uh, it's possible this wasn't heartless. I need to check. Uh, 
I need to ask some, the son some questions. Uh, are you just showing up at the kid's house? His uncle's, are you sure you'll be welcome? Pretty sure I'm on his pencil case. That's right. Mm, so yeah, he goes, he goes, and Batman's already there. It says the door is open. There's no one here. Mm. I love how those both of them are just like so spot on with the clues because Batman's like there's no sign of struggle. They left quickly, fresh skin marks in the driveway, and Dick's already like tracks in the carpet. Looks like a suitcase was dragged. And then, so looks, then, then the pencil the case sealing the deal. The pencil case has a note that says help. Help. Uh, but yeah, he's like the yeah, the uncle said Ego's family had money. The uncle became Ego's legal legal guardian last night. So they look on the go on his computer. I'll take it's only a four digit security code. Oracle software should crack it in. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he checks the email. There's a uh, booking for a flight to Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, left 6 a.m. Uh, that morning. Two tickets uh, in the kid's name and passport information. But the tickets were booked two weeks ago. <laughs> So the uncle oh, yep. that means premeditation. Uncle, yes, the uncle killed the phone. Oh, wait, yes. Premeditation. That's right. That makes it murder one. <laughs> uh the uncle killed the father, made it look like heartless. So that's where everyone would be looking. So Dick's like, is the car close by Batman? Yes, why? Because Eco's plane has been in the air for five hours and the GCPD doesn't have jurisdiction in Vietnam. We need to get to Bloodhaven, the Titans Tower. Mm. So what do you think about Batman's thoughts on the Titans? Yeah, he was right. Mm. I always said he didn't have to pull this team around together. They form around it because they care for each other. Because that's always been the thing with the Titans is that they're more family and less a group of co-workers. The Justice yeah. League is more business. Yep. Okay, so who is the guy? Is that supposed to be Tempest in the back? The guy with black hair? Or did I, they just miscolor Wally's hair? Uh, I could see either way, but uh, I guess. Because when I saw that, I was like, wait, who's that dude? Yeah, because that's really <laughs> Because if Dick wasn't in Nightwing, I'd be like, oh, is that Dick? <laughs> I know, yeah. It's, yeah, it's either yeah, it's either Tempest or Wally with miscolored hair. Because that's the only shot you see of him, so. Right, yeah. But I love Starfire. Like, hi! <laughs> uh, I, I just love when Bruce is thinking. A few weeks ago, Dick and his friends saved over a million people. Now he's dropping everything for a single child, which is exactly as it should be. As Dick telling Cyborg, they need... The T jet. Uh, sure, I'll make sure it's so. Okay, so here's my question: They weren't they in Gotham, so they had to drive back to Bloodhaven to get the T jet. Doesn't? I'm sure Bruce has a plane. I'm sure Bruce has many planes. Uh, I mean, I mean, blood. I don't know. I mean, it's always changing with the writer, but I mean, Bloodhaven and Gotham are not that far apart, right? I know, I know, but I just thought the so it's probably just as easy to take the car. I guess. Then you don't have to go and get the plane and get it. And blah, blah, I guess. Blah. Yeah, I thought the cave would be closer, but maybe not. Mm. Oh, and then, but then Beast Boy's conversation with Batman. He's like, "You're used to people hating you, right?" That that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny, though. <laughs> yeah, he's like saying, "Since Beast World, you know, about people being scared of him and Batman. Do you do this to be liked? No, you had you do this to help. Yeah." And you didn't just help. You saved the world. It's hard for people to see the truth when they're holding torches and pitchforks in front of their faces. Hmm. I almost feel like that could be applied to many situations. Uh, many throughout history. <laughs> and currently. But anyone who hasn't been blinded by manufac manufactured outrage. Anyone with an ounce of sense of logic can see that you're a hero. You saved everyone on the planet, Garfield, Logan, nothing else. And Batman puts his hand on his shoulder. I'm like... Batman is firing on all cylinders this yeah. issue. I would like to see, I mean, just this. I issue. mean, yeah, this is a really good issue for Batman, too. <laughs> I would like to see Tom Taylor on a regular Batman book, a monthly Batman book. You know, maybe do do some good Batman stories where he isn't just all grim and gritty and depressed. And Hey, Tom Taylor. Bring uh, well, once he gets his mind right, because he's got this, like, 
Um, R, R, yeah. Right? yeah. Yep. Yeah, and also, well, I mean, now Jason has his mini series, The Hill, but I mean, isn't Jason? Didn't Batman mess Jason's brain up? I mean, has that gotten fixed? Uh, not completely. Awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say the big thing: Tom Taylor bring back Alfred. See, this is the other thing and why it can be nice to read when they have more than one book published. Because, yes, I would much rather read this Batman that's being a good dad than the Batman that's uh, messing with his son's brain. Like, no, that's bad. Or like one of the stories where Batman punches Dick or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, no. Mm, so, yeah. So, Batman and Nightwing take the T-Jet. Uh and batman this fear of yours doesn't extend the planes if my feet are touching something like a floor i seem to be mostly okay uh i love batman i like to take some of your blood a totally normal request dick says uh, this is in case what's happening to me isn't purely psychological yes you have a very strange way of showing you care but i appreciate it it makes sense he would do that because there's all kinds of weird stuff yes in the dc universe uh, but then uh, Oracle calls with all the information. Eco's grandfather was the owner and CEO of Orion Telecommunications. Eco's mother inherited all of it upon his death. The mother died in a car crash a year ago. At that point, Eco's father became the caretaker of the company and the fortune. But he refused to return to Vietnam. He didn't want to take Eco away from his home and his friends when the boy had just lost his mother. Uh Dick asked about the car crash. Oracle says it was supposed to be an accident, but uh, Batman, it may not have been. Yeah, um, so I'm guessing, although I feel like this, that no, I'm not sure. Do we know whether the uncle is the dad's brother or the mom's brother? Or uh, must be the... <laughs> oh, you know what? I think, it, bless you, I think, it, I think he is the the, the dad's brother because I think the, in the later in the story doesn't Nightwing say something like you killed your brother for money or something or... yeah I mean and that's what I was thinking because yeah. presumably if he were the sister's brother he wouldn't have had to kill the dad to get the money well he I, well, I think it was a chain because I think it, the mother was the one who came from the money right yeah so, so that's she, what I'm saying so if he was the mother's sibling then he would have had the money or he would have just needed to kill the mom yeah to get the yeah, money yeah. and not had to worry about them yeah but they, but so it's the, like he's from the other side of the family, and that's why he needs the nephew. Yeah, he, first, the he nephew, kill, yeah, first he had to kill the mother, so the money would go to his brother, and then brother, he yeah, him. but then he needs his nephew alive because the money is the nephew's. Yeah, yeah, he's like the guardian of the money. He's this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, but they don't know where they're going to be heading because the company has all kinds of uh, homes and stuff in Vietnam. And Dick says, we don't need to know where they're, we don't need to know that. We just need to know where they're landing. Uh, the T-Jet is faster than any commercial plane. So they get there in time to intercept them at the airport. So I'm just like, so, cause the company like sends all these bodyguards for the uncle. And I'm just like, so they're okay with him just like kidnapping this child basic. Well, or I, well, I would assume. I mean, I would assume they don't know. Yeah, I guess. I guess, but I'm just like, uh, aren't you going to think something fishy's up when Batman and Nightwing show up, though? Well, yeah, but I mean, I presume that they didn't know that Batman and Nightwing were there. Until, well, once like, they see them, I mean, the bodyguards yeah. still come at them, yeah. Right, but. But yeah, so. Uh... So yeah, Batman and Nightwing show up. I love Batman. Usually Nightwing quips. He's not in that place now. He can lose some objectivity when a child is left behind. I'm glad he does. I've learned to detach during a case. Uh, basically talk about how he just sees exit wounds instead of a lost life. And Dick can't do that. He, But he doesn't let his emotions cloud his judgment. His emotions fuel him. Well, and maybe the uncle was like, he's the one that hired the bodyguards. Hmm. And I love this like two pit two page spread. It's just the fight, yeah. yeah. Just Batman. We fall into a pattern without thinking. Years of training and fighting together. He knows I'll block. Yeah. Oh god, this hits me so much harder now that I'm a father too. He knows I'll block anything coming at him. Uh, I know his blows will be uh, be where mine aren't, and he's he's gotten better, more efficient. 
He makes sure not to do lasting harm, but he's not wasting a single strike. So, are we, so what we, I believe, we're also we're emphasizing once again. Not only is Nightwing better than Batman, he's more skilled. Uh, we're also emphasizing that Nightwing is a character in comics that has actually grown and changed and matured, which does not happen because that you. can be kind of the weird thing is that yes, many characters in comics are kind of in this weird stasis. Yes. Yes. Or they, but, and or, that's one of the other cool things about the Titans crew is because they came in as either sidekicks like Dick and Wally or they came in created for new Teen Titans. So they were like young years is they can all be a little bit. I mean, not too dynamic because it is comics and they have to last 80 plus more years, uh, but they can. Yeah, but grow a little be bit. a little more dynamic and change and grow up in some of the ways that. Like Superman and Green Arrow and Batman and Wonder Woman and stuff can't because oh. they were already adults. Hold on, I'm sitting down on the job. We've said it many times tonight, so I have to hit the button. Batman, my favorite character. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Batman and Nightwing take out the guards. Uh, the uncle grabs Eco and basically like, uh, don't do anything stupid. We're getting in the car. Dick, no, you're absolutely not. And he runs at the uncle. The uncle shoots at him. Uh, but yeah, the uncle took the bodyguards' uh, gun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Dick puts his hands up. He takes the shot on his arm. Uh, so Batman's taking a single shot, hits his arm, shielding his face. He took the shot on purpose. Drew the fire. Drew the gun away from the boy. He doesn't have the same protection I do. His suit built for more movement it will stop the bullet but not the kinetic force that in this this is the part that really hit me this time the impact something will definitely be broken in his arm it would feel like being hit by a sledgehammer he should be knocked down my son isn't knocked down I feel all that adrenaline although it doesn't seem like his arm is actually broken so well I maybe mean, I'm, I'm sure the suit provides some support but i mean i think it's yeah he's like you said, it's a, it's anger, it's adrenaline hits because he pins that uncle to the wall by the throat. He's just like, uh, but he tells Eco, Eco, walk to Batman, and again, he goes like, kind of afraid of Batman. He says, "It's okay, you're safe now. He'll protect you. He's always protected me." Oh. Yeah. Yeah, your own brother. Yes. Yeah, he said, "You killed your, you killed Eco's father. Your own brother. You killed his mother." I love you. the uncle. How could you possibly know that? I didn't for certain. You just confirmed it. You orphaned a child for money. Rude. I know. And Batman's just like in the angle. But uh, Dick knows how that feels because that's what happened to him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But uh, Bat Batman thinking, yeah, the anger's there. I felt it. I've acted on it. I can understand and forgive whatever comes next, but nothing comes next. Because all Dick says, like, we're taking you back to go, you're, you'll face justice in Gotham. Mm. So, yeah, they'll get back on the T jet. I love Batman, like, holding the uncle by the scruff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they leave him tied up on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> I love Dick brought the pencil case. Like, here you go. Yeah. And it makes Eagle so happy. Then they, they, they tucked him in so he can sleep. Oh. But yeah, this Ben says he knows Dick will make sure Eco's taken care of because that's what our family does. Oh. See, I lo I, lo I I love this two parter. Just you know, again, it didn't have to be a giant super villain. Sometimes I just love a mystery for you know Batman and Nightwing and. We got all the. We also, all the it's so nice to see something that's only a two-parter in comics. Yeah. And we got all the feels you like. I mean, it's uh, tons. <laughs> Chef's kiss, as they say. It's such a small story. We did. I mean, again, we got all the good stuff that makes a good Nightwing story. Yep. And it was quite a good Batman story. It was, yes. Oh, I just wish it had been longer, because then we wouldn't have gotten this backup story. 
So, I mean, again, all right, ag- again, as the, as the history professor, did part two of this backup do anything else for you that part one didn't? So, reading the second one, I think I liked the, the art a little more. I mean, it's not my preferred style, yeah. but I was like, eh, all right, I don't dislike it as much as much this time. Um, I mean, like, I don't know. It was, it was fine, but nothing. I guess the thing that makes it disappointing for, because I read a review and somebody was like, of the comic that, I don't know, I randomly saw it linked, I think. And the person was raving about both parts of the story. I mean, obviously more about the one that had the main story. Yeah. But I guess for me, it's not that it's bad. It's just nothing special. And I was really excited because as we know, I love the Middle Ages, but this story, I mean, there wasn't anything really that medieval about it. I mean, it could have been anything at any time. And I don't know. I think I just, also, I was a little bit turned off by, oh, we're making the Joker some kind of priest or bishop or whatever who's a bad guy. I was like, oh, come on. That's like so overdone. (laughs) And doesn't he like basically kill him? And then it's like, oh, I know he's going to be back. I know Grace is going to be back. And it's just like, well, it's like he's stabs him but then he doesn't really kill him i guess or he doesn't know if he's dead or not it's like it's yeah but yeah you're right i mean this could have happened at any time i mean this could have this story could have taken place in like i don't know like the 1920s or something and it's like you know right yeah i mean so i think that was what kind of most was it felt like it wasn't particularly medieval aside from them just like saying references to the plague, which again, though, the plague recurred for several hundred years in Europe. So it could have happened in any other yeah. plague outbreak. Um, and then it just kind of felt like the stuff that they did to make it medievally was just kind of like bad tropes about the Middle Ages. Yeah. And I was hoping for more. Because, like I said, it's easy when people write stuff about the Middle Ages or really any time when it was more religious to be like, hey, let's make a religious figure the bad guy. And I'm like, oh, that's really overdone. Yeah. Um, I just want- it's not like all religious people were bad guys in the Middle Ages. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if we said this the last time for part one, but I wonder if this story was just, it was too big of an idea for this little two-part backup story. Like if they had more page count and more, you know... That this had been like its own mini series or something, if they could have done way more with it. But yeah, well, because I think part of it is there's very little dialogue. Yeah. It's just, it's like the inner thoughts of the Joker character. And that's, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that doesn't, number one, that's not that he's necessarily a reliable narrator. That isn't necessarily who I want. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I sometimes feel like the stories are weird when the dialogue's not, when there's no dialogue that's yeah. mattering. I mean, everything is just some pictures and the Joker saying stuff. And I, I just think, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm not as versed in history as you are, but I'm just like, I don't think they gave you enough motivation for these characters or like, you know, like enough sense of who these characters are. So yes. Like, okay. Yeah. Guy's named Grayson, so this is supposed to be our dick analogy, and then of course the the priest is supposed to be the Joker. But it's like, right? Which that was one thing. Also, was I didn't totally understand why it was the Joker. Yeah. I mean, because when it's Dick, it doesn't have to be the Joker. Oh. I mean, it could be a different. Person. I just want- I mean, if it was Jason, it would make sense um, for it to be the Joker. I just um, I just wonder if maybe that that was the other thing since there wasn't a lot of dialogue and there wasn't a lot of space to like tell a, a bigger story where they're just like, well, we need a familiar face that Im- immediately as soon as someone looks at it, they're going to be like, oh, that's the villain. So the Joker. Yeah, but so many of the Batman villains yeah. are recognizable in in that way. Or is that supposed to be another thing where it's like a, is a jester, you know, like a. Right. But again, like, why is the why? jester a priest? Like those yeah. are two different roles in yeah. uh, the middle ages. So That's what I'm saying. Gotten... you really don't get anyone's motivation. You don't get, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. Right. I'm like, where did this grace? And well, come right. From? Also, it's like, why are these mercenaries fighting him? And it's, it's like, okay. On the one hand, if Dick's upset because people 
like he's Roma and people murder his family like that. I get because stuff like that was happening um, oh, yeah. in the Middle Ages and in, you know, other times. But then, yeah, why is he at this church? And also, like, why is this guy saying, like, Grayson is the spawn of of Satan? I mean, that's that's like a more serious thing in the Middle Ages. And then he's like, Maybe he's Asmodeus, which is like the god of lust, um, which, or I mean, not the god of lust, is like a demon that's supposed to be lustful, which, uh, like, is that supposed to, because they also have a thing about, like, it, it turns his plump arse into a skeletal mockery of life. Uh, so I'm like, are they trying to make meta jokes or whatever? Because I don't consider Dick lustful and that's definitely not what tom taylor's going with um so it's kind of or is this just supposed to show that the joker is kind of off the rails um but well and then yeah again when they say is he perhaps our own sin is he a living incarnation of some dead god made corporeal fed by unholy illness that threatened to consume the civilized world i'm like i don't i mean yeah uh, i don't that's doesn't that doesn't really feel that evil to me like a saying he's a demon yes that would work but saying he is the incarnation of a dead god no someone in the middle ages would not say that <laughs> again they would yeah. say, you could be the incarnation of a demon not of a dead god because a dead god is a demon in the medieval worldview yeah like i said they didn't give us enough to explain this story it was just it just seemed yeah, like, I don't know. I guess I just feel like a lot of the stuff the Joker is saying in there about, yeah, like, he's the spawn of Satan. Steve was bewitched by something unholy. Yeah. I'm just like, why are you? I don't know. I didn't feel like that stuff really fit. It's like they wanted to do a different setting, a different concept, but they really didn't do enough to, like, set it up. Right. Or, like, they think that's what, or, again, like I said, it, it just bothered me because I felt like it was tropes about the middle ages that they were like oh i bet this is what someone in the middle ages would say and i'm like eh, not really <laughs> i mean i i think the hell heck the story would have been better if you know at the end joker just would have woken up and been like oh i shouldn't have had those tacos last night <laughs> i mean the hope part the hope part made sense yeah saying and so i i get I get that. Yeah, I think what annoyed it for me was I just felt like they made some errors in what they were having the Joker person say. Um, and that didn't really fit. That didn't really fit for me. Because again, like why is the priest person murdering uh, someone like that's not really supposed to be. I mean, I'm not saying that no priest in the middle ages ever did that, but um, that's generally speaking, they were not supposed to have weapons. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I was just looking up the solicits. Uh, so next, so Nightwing 113, you know, issue 300. Looks like it's it's gonna be regular size. Well, it's the same size, forty pages, which is what this issue was. So, no. so they're not. I always thought. Oh, thought for big anniversaries like that, they usually did bigger. But yes, yeah, looks like same price, four ninety nine, forty pages. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, not a lot of uh, detail. Just like you've seen him there, you've seen Nightwing like this, like this. So, wonder if it's just gonna be like an overall, you know, about the crazy. So now see him like this. <laughs> yes. All right. Anything else, Kristen? Um, two things. Did you read yet? Was Dick in World's Finest? Did you read that one yet? Um, uh, real quick, like at the end of the issue, they were setting up like what's coming next issue because somebody's after Batmite and 
Mr. McPitalik, uh, like somebody brought like stuff in the cave to life, like the di- gi- <laughs> like Abe Lincoln came off the giant penny was fighting the dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah, but 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 yeah, they just had Dick in the cave real quick for two seconds with Batman and Superman, but that was but that oh, was the okay. extent of it. Yeah. All right. Well, then I guess just the only other thing is, um, I'm sure you saw that they've announced. I mean, I don't know wh- when, but that there's supposed to be a Teen Titans movie now. Part of. Oh um, the- yeah. A part. But of it- course, they haven't said who will be the Teen Titans. Yeah, it's 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 gonna it's gonna be early because uh, yeah, the first movie in that whole universe is gonna be the Superman movie. So, and I don't think it'll be interesting to see who is on the Teen Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think Dick and the, one of his uh, alter egos would alter be on there. Yeah, you would hope. Well, we shall see. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. Well, next week we are going to do one of our classic reviews. And I believe, uh, yes, you did mention new 52. We're going to cover the first arc of new 52, the first seven issues of Nightwing from new 52. All righty. Cause we all know I love that red costume. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Girl me a little bit, but I, I, again, the blue works much better in my opinion. All right, so, All right so, so so yeah, we'll do that, and then after that, you'll get your electric mullet for a few weeks, and then when we come back next month, of course, yeah, new issue of Titans and Nightwing three hundred. All right, so send us your thoughts, kids. Email us capes and lunatics at gmail dot com or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. I uh, can just send us money on the Cash App link. And of course, <laughs> whoa, hey. And of course, the, the, and then of course, yeah, uh, join our Patreon. You get something different every month. Uh, the new episode is going to be Lil Hellfire's crazy conspiracy theories. Let Lil, <laughs> let Lil tell you why some birds aren't real. Uh, so, why? Well, find everything at tube space thought io slash capes and lunatics podcast network tube space thought io slash capes and lunatics podcast network and while you have your wallet out go on amazon because you know you all go on amazon and pick up the grace and boy wonder <laughs> again teach tell you everything you, you don't know everything about dick grace and you want to know everything about dick grace and pick up this book I guarantee it's better than that Middle Ages story uh, in the ba- in the back of this 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 month's Nightwing. All right, so get that on Amazon. Help support an educator. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us. Again, next week we'll cover the first seven issues of Nightwing from the New Fifty Two. And I can't believe Nightwing 300 is going to be a normal size issue. That's crazy. Maybe they're trying to save paper. Yeah. I mean, our wallets will thank us, but. Wanted a bunch of back. Wanted a bunch of backup stories. Good ones. Or maybe because next next month we are getting the annual too, maybe. All right, kids. So you know what that means. Come back next time. Join us at same wing time. Same wing channel. See Nightly news. Keep an eye on your brothers.